Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back everyone. So today um, we're gonna look at um, a continuation of what we we looked at on Monday, um, which is about enzymes um, and its reaction. But what we're gonna look at in more detail today is um, focusing more on the enzyme kinetics. Okay, so uh, we've looked at a very basic overview of um, what how enzyme reaction works. Okay, as um, shown in this image so whereby you have the um, um, enzyme so your enzyme of interest um, and then we have um, the uh, the basic substrate that is compatible to that particular enzyme and um, when they are compatible to one another the substrate will bind to the enzyme active site uh, forming this enzyme substrate complex and finally um, a chemical reaction or biochemical reaction will take place and you will have your products okay um, and we, we've talked about a little bit on the um, example of the product which is um, uh, in, in this case shown in the bottom right corner is the lactase, um, uh, lac lactase enzyme okay working on um, the lactose um, uh, forming glucose and galactose okay so that's the very basic principle uh, a very basic uh, example of um, how enzymatic reaction works Okay, and we also um, cover a little bit um, about um, the models, okay, the, the theory um, on how enzymes and substrate works, okay, and um, the basic principle is, uh, well, two models, okay, or two theories that we're going to look at um, today um, is the lock and key model, okay, by Emil Fischer, uh, and he proposed this mechanism. Um, in 1894 and the other one is induced fit model uh, proposed by um, Daniel Koshland in 1958 okay and why these two models are important is because um, when we're talking about um, a reaction chemistry per se okay when, when we learn about chemistry uh, where you have a plus b equals to c um, and uh, when you go into a little bit uh, detail on um, the reaction kinetics okay when you look at reaction kinetics where we have the k equilibrium you have the rate of the reaction and stuff um it's it's normally it's a, it's very simple right so you have an a plus b equals to c so the rate can be uh, a sec uh, zero order first order second order right um so it's similar principle uh for enzyme kinetics in that sense but the difference is um now you need to consider the middleman which is the enzyme substrate complex and without considering this um you know uh, it, it will go as as uh, what you sh should expect in a chemical reaction because um in a a plus b uh, scenario there are basically um, no limits so the limitation is normally either the substrate okay so the limitation in terms of the substrate um, and reacting and forming a product and and most of the chemical reaction actually works in one way so um, that's why it's less critical to look at the, the intermediate uh, intermediate complex however in enzymes the uh, rate determining factor is actually the formation of well the formation of uh, the enzyme substrate com complex is normally considered the rate determining steps Okay, and, and we will see that um, soon. Alright, so um, so we have two models that we're going to look at, lock and key model, induced feed, and there are some other models that if you want to um, actually go into a bit more detail, you can probably look for the solvation theory. Okay, so the solvation theory is basically looking at how uh, water molecules um, affecting all of these um, enzymatic reaction. Okay, um, and uh, we we talk about structural water a little bit um, on Monday, so it's it's kind of like related to that. And the second one is a conformation selection, whereby the theory says an enzyme can have um, a few because you know as as we mentioned, um, enzyme is not a static molecule; it's it's dynamic. It's keep on changing a little bit. So the conformation and selection theory uh, uh, propose that. Um, one enzyme can have a few um, uh, folding or a few shapes 
and um, the the one that has the best um, shape or, or compatible compatible shape to the substrate will actually uh, the one that will take the um, the reaction forward okay but we're gonna we, we're not gonna go into in, in more detail about those two um, we'll just focus on lock and key model in this fit and um, after that we will look at one of the um, uh, theory in enzyme kinetics using the lock and key model um, by uh, michaelis menten um, equation okay all right for for all sake and purposes um, the terminologies okay so i blocked my own face over there but the terminologies that we're going to use throughout um, this lecture is enzyme will be abbreviated as e substrate as s and the enzyme substrate complex as e plus s and finally of course products is just p okay let's move on now um for the first model the enzymatic reaction um by lock and key model so it's, it's basically very simple all right so um you have your keys um that one is s1 s0 and s2 okay uh, forgive me because the image is off a little bit uh, this is because i prepared all these slides using um, a microsoft powerpoint on a pc or on windows um, but what i'm doing now is because i want to use uh, my handwriting to you know jot down bit the pieces um i, I open it on my ipad and unfortunately it skewed the images location a little bit uh, but i hope that it's still um i can still deliver the the information that you need um to learn about it all right so um lock and key model so what it tells you is that enzymes and substrate are very very specific okay um even though i said previously they are not specific because enzyme is dynamics and whatnot but lock and key model um, proposed by Emil Fischer was uh, thinking that um, enzymes um, has its a static version okay it's much more um, similar to how a lock is um, it's shown okay it's, it's just a lock it doesn't move um, the key slots are static it's, it's just there okay so in this model um, this the substrate should be or must be very very specific um, to the shape of uh, what we have um, on the lock right so even if you have um, a secondary key which is um, a thin enough that can fit into the lock but it doesn't guarantee that you can actually open the lock so it's the same principle over here so the substrate must be very very specific to the enzyme so that's the basic theory about lock and key model Okay, and once um, the uh, lock can enter the key, so you, you will have your, um, oh, this is wrong, uh, S, S, uh, S, E or S plus E, uh, E plus S um, should be, you know, just a combination of uh, the enzyme and, and the substrate while having the product will have you unlocking the lock. Okay, basic principle. Um, I don't see that you won't understand this. Okay, um, basically what it says is enzymes are highly selective for catalysts. Um, their activity depends on geometric shape. I'll just change this. Um, okay, depends on geometric shape. And interaction between enzyme and substrate, as I mentioned, in a different way. Okay, therefore enzymes are able to differentiate identical function groups um, in a different molecule. So again, you have learned about different types of functional groups and hopefully how these functional groups um, fill 3D space um, in molecules. It's just that in the enzyme and substrate, the space is much bigger than the normal organic chemicals or organic uh, molecules that you actually uh, work on. So an enzyme may enable hydrolysis of an hex uh, hexyl ester while the isomeric formatyl phenyl ester is not cleave as i mentioned again is highly highly specific because it does not fit into the active site of the enzyme okay again this is the um, a critical information uh, active site that's the word okay um let's continue the kinetic processes of a lipase an example that we will look at in, in more detail um hopefully soon 
usually involve an acidic center of activation of the ester and acetic carbonyl and a necrophilic center at the enzyme that forms a covalent bond of the, um, with the substrate. Okay. Now, covalent bond is not compulsory, okay? um, but it does play a, a critical role in, in some of um, how enzyme works. But again, this is uh, focusing on just lock and key model. Okay, during this stage, the initial ester is already cleaved. In the second stage, the process of, um, processed water is introduced to cleave the enzyme substrate complex and generate the free enzyme. Okay, so that's, that's the basic principle of, of um, how lock and key model works. Um, right. So if the image is not clear, again, um, the PDF version of uh, this presentation is already posted on your spectrum. So go and uh, download them and you know jot down while listening to this um, uh, recording. Okay, um, to show an example on oh wait sorry, there's there's no example on on lock and key model because you know I've already show you like this is very specific. You have a lock, you have a key, you put it in. Um, you have the uh, enzyme and substrate complex. Yeah, the reaction works, and you have your product. Okay, now we looked at the second one, which is the induced fit model, um, where it's, it's, it's more on what I've said initially, whereby the enzyme are uh, not static, it's, it's more dynamic, um, as hopefully um, the video can be played here. Okay, so uh, what's critical about the induced fit model is that um, the, the theory tells you that there is a transition state intermediate upon binding. Um, same thing, um, for the lock and key you also have kind of like intermediate where the lock and key, um, where, where the enzyme and substrate are actually uh, interacting. Okay, it's the same thing uh, over here. But um, it, for the lock and key model, uh, when Emil Fisher actually proposed the model, they, they did not, uh, or he did not actually um, propose an uh, intermediary. So it's just that when I explain it to you guys, I introduce the intermediary. But um, the basic principle for lock and key is that you have enzyme, you have substrate, so you have the product. Okay, so it's, it's a bit weird. Um, but when, when um, Daniel Koshlin proposed the um, inducent model, um, he proposed the transition state whereby the enzyme now is more flexible, it's more dynamic, okay? Um, and, and, and as shown here, so initially you have your enzyme and substrate, you have a complexing, so now you see the enzyme substrate are actually moving, okay? Um, so the enzyme are actually moving, substrate is mo moved into the active site, the enzyme actually moved to complement the um, space by um, the glucose, or in this case, the example is glucose. Okay, mind you, this image that I'm using now is actually um, a, a real image. It's, it's not that I, I make it up. I just made it up, no. Um, these are actually a crystal structure of um, uh, hexokinase uh, enzyme and the glucose. And, and the active sign and, and all the reaction are not really recorded, but uh, what scientists did was um, to record hexokinase on its own, okay, forming a crystal, a crystal structure, and then analyze um, the crystal structure using X-ray crystallography, solve the structure, and um, they got the initial uh, open stage of the enzyme. Now the binding stage or the um, enzyme substrate um, complex are uh, also a um, um, uh, an, an, a crystal structure, okay. So these are not made up. Uh, it's just that I, I change it and I, I use the images or the crystals uh, images and make it into a, a moving picture to show you how a transition state works. And you can actually see, um, well, after this, we're going to play how when, when the products are produced and how it will look like. Um, but that's, that's basically it. So when you see now, um, the enzyme are actually engulfing the um, substrate. Okay forming the enzyme substrate complex and after that the enzyme will release it and the product will come out okay so um, it says here well, even though my face is actually blocking it um, it says here I'll probably make it smaller there you go 
Okay, um, the conformational change induced by binding of D-glucose, which is the purple, the initial purple, not this one. I should have changed the color of the product. Yeah. No. Um, okay, so the initial uh, substrate, which is D-glucose in purple, creates a solvent accessible pocket. In a solvent inaccessible pocket, sorry, um, at the domain interface or what we call as um, the active site, trapping the substrate. So um, initially you have an open um, uh, configuration, the substrate comes in, um, you know, changing the uh, solvent uh, accessibility. So the interaction. Now, as, as I mentioned, the structure of water is very important in keeping the enzyme structure works. So when you have um, a substrate, or, or another entity coming into the enzyme, what is influenced is basically um, the structure of water. So same thing, this is what happened here. So that why, that's why it says solvent inaccessible pocket. So you have a, a, an open active site with all water molecules, if you can imagine it. Um, when the substrate came in, it actually pushes out all the water molecule. And therefore, what initially has the interaction between the enzyme and the water molecule now becomes the interaction between the enzyme and the substrate and because the substrate is not water molecule it's normally bigger so the interaction between enzyme and substrate are now different what might happen is that the interaction now pulling the enzyme and and closing the enzyme producing the enzyme substrate complex so uh, that's that's the example um, I'm not sure if I can show you this. I can. All right. So this is an example of um, how enzyme substrate works. Um, I didn't produce this. Okay. Uh, I just found it, and um, uh, if I can. Okay. Unfortunately, I cannot play it here uh, because what I'm doing now is I'm actually doing an air playing to. Um, my PC, so oh god, what happened? Uh, let's see, let's go screen mirroring again. Okay, so because I'm doing a screen mirroring, um, the issue about Apple, I'm um, just gonna, not gonna talk about it, just focus on this. Okay, so um, you can have a look um, on the video, so the link is there https um, double dots forward slash bit dot lee forward slash 3mi9 bdq so have a look um, if you are interested in in the motion otherwise the motion that i've shown you here it's sufficient okay let's look at what um daniel koshlin wrote in his paper okay so the problem of a protein synthesis is formidable Okay, so it's very complex, formidable, because a combination of three requirements, um, each one which of which by itself is rather easily satisfied. Okay, since the condition are uh, satisfied in each case by the enzyme catalyst reaction, the template uh, or the, the enzyme, the original enzyme in protein synthesis is presumed to be enzyme-like in character. Um, recently, a new theory it's not recent anymore okay so this was written in 1958 okay um, a new theory to explain enzyme specificity has been proposed which suggests that reaction between an enzyme and substrate can occur only okay, another critical thing only after a change in protein structure induced by a substrate itself okay so this is what um, uh, Daniel Koshlin is proposing so it's basically what I've shown in the previous picture. So it can only happen um, when there is an interaction between enzyme and substrate. Now, um, if, if you notice, it says about protein synthesis. Um, why? Because initially when, when um, you know, biologists are doing research on how protein are made um, in cells or in, in biological system, they have no idea on, on how it works. And again, in 1958, biotechnology uh, is not a, a major factor. It's not a major driving factor in any countries. So it's during the Industrial Revolution and whatnot. So um, it's scarce. Uh, people are doing biological research to look at 
how enzyme works um, and a lot, a lot of biological works but it, it did it not specifically saying that you know this is for chemistry and what we are doing now as the uh, the younger generation uh, we learn from our previous uh, people previous bright minds and we try and and use it as um as as oh, um for industrial purposes per se because again we have more population nowadays okay so uh focusing back on this uh as as what i mentioned when this theory I'll just continue reading when this theory is applied in the problem of protein synthesis it is seen that the existing data can be explained by a flexible template again a flexibility in which each complex peptide bond induces an alignment necessary for the formation of next bond um, so this is basically explaining on how peptides are made so a combination of one amino acid to another and to another and another one so um, it's, it's very specific and um, and why Daniel Koshland mentioned about this is if you know about protein synthesis in biology um, you are actually using one um, enzyme so a ribosome okay so this ribosome can actually uh, attach multiple amino acids so so to say 20 different amino acids and and you, you can imagine on how um, when we mention about enzyme specificity uh, to have a 20 different substrate for a specific enzyme using the original lock and key theory is kind of like inaccurate so um, Emil Fischer and, and some other scientists propose this um, uh, you know induced fit or, or a flexibility on a template because you need to be flexible to actually um, um, have 20 different amino acids um, right so that's this is what it's, it's saying all right so uh, a little bit on the uh, structure of water um, this image is actually from um, a textbook um, principle of biotechnology sixth edition uh, i do have a list of the references um, at the end okay so go and have a look if you want to okay so what it says here is basically is what i i mentioned initially so you have your enzymes okay you, you have your enzyme over here and then the enzyme has its own structural water probably highlight it using a different color okay so the enzyme has its own structural water same similar thing happens uh, similar thing occurs in your substrate your substrate also has its own structural water again uh, in a biological system everything works in the echoes media so water is everywhere even in our body we have 70% 70, 70 water so it's the same thing when we are looking at a mi uh, micro um, scale okay so um, when the, the two uh, entities the enzyme and substrate comes um, into play so the disorder water is displaced um, by enzyme substrate interaction um, and, and producing this um, ENS complex okay so enzyme substrate interaction stabilized by hydrogen bonding ionic hydrophobic interaction and of course um, some will have a covalent bonding interaction between the enzyme and substrate before it can actually um, react Okay, so that's that's basic uh, principle and and of course the substrate binding involve a trade-off between entropy and enthalpy again when you talk about enthalpy um, entropy and enthalpy goes back to the original ones which I mentioned initially the Gibbs free energy Delta H minus T Delta S okay it's basic so that's why I said if you forget if you've already forgotten about um good free energy, please go back and you know just learn a little bit. Um Alright. So um enzyme kinetics, this is the main core. So this is the main um part. Um uh, we'll probably touch half of these enzyme kinetics um in the first lecture and then um afterwards I'm gonna um move on into the uh, a second lecture. Um, talking about the other half of enzyme kinetics um, because to split this into two I'm afraid that um, it, it might take uh, too long for the second lecture so I'm gonna uh, split enzyme kinetics into two sections uh, and hopefully um, we, we can cover it uh, within two different sections instead of just um, 
um, cholinum one. Okay, so enzyme kinetics. So we we've looked at the theories on on how um, uh, uh, enzymatic or biocatalytic reaction works. So you have the enzyme, you have a substrate, forming an enzyme substrate complex, and then you have the enzyme end product. So um, to explain about enzyme kinetics, um, just the basic theory on on how the uh, enzyme and substrate interacts doesn't really tell you uh, about the rate of the reaction uh, for example which are of our interest as a chemist because we always want to have a product and we, we always want to have the uh, highest and fastest uh, product formation right so regardless of where you are you as a chemist that is what you you want to focus on even if you are doing an analytical chemistry um, what you want is to have the um, analysis running as fast as possible and getting the perfect results so it's in, it's in our nature so chemistry you always want to have something which is very fast and very efficient okay so um the enzymatic reaction or enzyme kinetics there's one model that um we uh well what what i'm gonna use as an example um throughout this enzyme kinetics um lecture which is called it's not written here right uh, which is called Michaelis Menten model. Okay, so this one is of course it's just focusing on just kinetics. All right, so we 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 are not talking about um the dynamics of how enzyme and substrate works. Okay, so we're just gonna focus on um the the kinetics theory. Okay, so um. So in this mechanism maintain um uh, kinetics theory um there's there's one assumption or or two basic um uh, reaction okay so the first one is the binding of um substrate and enzyme okay as as shown here and the second one is the catalytic uh, process by which the substrate is converted into a product okay and its release all right so it's it's basic principle so basically you have e plus s um, forming e plus p as simple as that and then the e can be recycled in all right however in reality the reaction um, is more complex and and based on the theory that we've looked at the industry model um this is the the explanation okay it's more complex with the presence of x um either regions uh okay so what it means by uh, presence of X is um, an unknown, okay? So you have an X here, and then uh, you can have the X uh, being recycled or becomes X1, where, you know, X1 will be converted to X, not again using a different enzyme. So that's how biology works. In biology, uh, there's no reaction just, you know, forcing it one way without any um, additional um enzymes or proteins they actually play uh, all right so um in in this example when when you when we are talking about enzyme and substrate it's always like one enzyme reacting with substrate and then for producing the products but in in reality it's more complex whereby you might have a cofactor okay we we looked at it in in the next coming lecture but we're not going to touch about the cofactor and whatnot um in um the kinetic section uh, but however you still need to to remember that um, there are um, some other entities that comes into play other than just the enzyme and the uh, substrate okay so um, in, in this reaction since the reaction is mostly reversible in other words it has reached equilibrium so uh, an enzyme and kinetics um, there's always a possibility of uh, equilibrium whereby um, your enzyme and substrate even even though they, they are actually binds to one another um, if the uh, core factor or the other factors that influencing the production of products are not met okay the products might not be formed um, so but we, we, we're not going to touch about all the other core factors and whatnot we're just going to assume okay that the enzyme and substrate they can form to what um, forming the enzyme substrate complex okay they can disassemble all right so uh, you can form you can disassemble so that's what is shown here okay you can form and, and disassemble while producing again the substrate and the enzyme 
or it can be pushed forward producing the products and the enzyme which will then be uh, recycled again okay so that's that's the basic theory um, and and when we have all of these um, in a beaker right for example you always have an equilibrium whereby the enzyme kinetics um, you know because when, when you do an enzymes uh, when you do a biocatalysis reaction you don't want to use um, a similar amount of um, enzyme per reaction okay because the the reason by why you want to use enzyme as catalyst uh, as the catalyst is again a catalyst is um, something that is re uh, recyclable or regenerates throughout the reaction that's one thing okay um, so it's it's totally different than just a pure chemical reaction um, so that's why when you have something uh, like enzyme and substrate so probably um, in, in, in in industrial uh, scenario you might have a uh, hundred mole of your substrate but only one mole or a fraction of a mole uh, for your enzyme okay and if you have that at one point you will have a saturation of your enzyme and substrate complex okay so that is part of the critique um, for enzyme kinetics okay consideration okay therefore the catalytic process kcat can be influenced by the rate of reaction okay so um again when you when you're talking about, about uh, reaction kinetics where previously um you would probably look, uh, see this from your product right or, or c whatever you want to call it you always consider this as a k catalytic if you have a catalyst uh, for example if you use um you know yes ionic um uh, uh ion uh, acid okay acid as a catalyst so you always have this k cat um the equilibrium constant for the uh, reaction okay so why you say it's k cat is because um uh, even though the reaction is pushing one one way you, you there, there is no guarantee that um, the reaction is not actually going the other way around okay there's there's no um for, for some reaction yes it's very straightforward but if you actually do some research if you're doing a research and masters or phd you you will see this uh, sometimes you produce a product and then the products after a while forms back um into your reactants case in point okay a basic example if you have a carboxylic acid and an alcohol okay so you can so when normally when you, when you learn you always say that it will produce um, an ester correct okay but an ester is always um, uh, what do you call it it's, it's easily uh, degraded back into carboxylic acid and water so you have acid catalysis you, you have a uh, a basic catalysis to actually forms the uh, original reactants back and what you need to 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 um, the only thing that you need is just water molecule okay so um, in in case of um, the carboxylic acid and alcohol reaction you are actually you you do have uh, slight equilibrium okay uh, even though the uh, forward arrow uh, the backward arrow is very very slow so why you, you can consider this as a kcat so the catalytic um uh, minus kcat oh well, it's not the same rate so we can consider that as k2 okay so uh, one equivalent constant pushing forward to the products is higher than um the the opposite direction okay again um why do i talk about this uh, it's because when you consider um, the enzyme and substrate or the enzymatic reaction the same principle happens okay so you have a k1 here okay um focusing on the uh, e plus s reaction focusing on this reaction over here uh, probably i'll just change the color okay so you have a k1 um over here all right so um the uh, equilibrium uh, the constant um, from a, a constant that you can calculate to produce the enzyme substrate okay so you have um, k minus one all right so whereby the constant 
um, for the enzyme substrate complex to actually deform into the enzyme, the free enzyme and the substrate. Or you can have a K2 uh, whereby the uh, uh, constant for the product formation and also K-2 um, for the backwards reaction. However, okay, however, uh, normally the rate determining factor so again, in ending enzyme kinetics, this is one of the keywords. Read, determining factor. Okay, so the rate determining factor is always um, for the product formation because that's what you want, right? Um, if you, you cannot convert your substrate into a product, then something is wrong with your reaction or something is wrong with your um, biocatalysis. So in this case, um, we, we're going to consider that the rate determining factor is normally K2 because um, as I mentioned, uh, for a product to revert back to the uh, reactant, it's normally very, very low. Okay, so the, the, the reaction is very, very low. Um, so we, we're going to consider, assume, okay, this is part of the mechanism maintenance um, uh, kinetics model. So we're going to assume that K minus 2 is negligible. It's very very little, so it's negligible. Therefore, the rate determining step for the formation of product is K two, or we call it as K cat. All right. So this is the basic. Um, you need to remember K two and K cat. All right. So um, provided that there is no change in thermodynamics. All right. So that's that's always the case. Um, again, because uh, delta G, delta H minus uh, T delta S okay if you focus on this um, and 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 how uh, uh, the Chatelier's principle um, Chatelier principle says in equilibrium whereby if you have a formation of one thing that is gonna push the equilibrium towards the other direction right so if you, have, if you include more products then you will push it into uh, formation of the substrate um, same principle applies here but uh, we um, for the purpose of enzyme kinetics we will go into in more detail afterwards all right okay so um, the equilibrium constant uh, K equilibrium or km uh, is therefore can be written as you should still remember your your kinetics right so you can have uh, a, a K um cat here for example okay equilibrium okay m so you can always write it s equals to the concentration of enzyme um, times concentration of um the product okay divided by um concentration of enzyme and the concentration of substrate okay um so this is only uh if and only if it's in equilibrium okay so only when something is in equilibrium then you can actually calculate the uh, equilibrium constant all right um so it, when, when you consider this all right so the enzymes in in both sides left and right are they similar or are they different okay if you think about it they should be similar right because uh, in a biocatalysis enzyme biocatalysis you you want to regenerate um, the catalyst so in this case both of them is considered to have the similar um, uh, similar concentration so therefore the the evolution factor for equilibrium constant is just p concentration of the product of a concentration of the substance um, uh, chemical kinetics all right so again for this reaction um, we, we 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 have yet to look at the a more complex uh, enzyme kinetics uh, which is the uh, considering the formation of um, the enzyme such a complex first before formation of the uh, products all right so um, if you just look at this and then you know that you know the, the the reaction will uh, pushes um, to the right hand side because initially you will have um, 
a lot of uh, substrate and uh, and low of uh, products okay so equilibrium alright so when let's check the specific all right so you have more substrate you push this direction to the um, right hand side okay some uh, thermodynamic parameters um, again Gibbs free energy and another form of Gibbs free energy and how this Gibbs free energy um, related to equilibrium constant is by having this reaction I'm not gonna derive okay I'm not gonna derive on how this becomes that but that is the basic principle okay so uh, you can actually derive um, those two and forming this ln k so that what you need to remember is that delta g equals to uh, minus rt um, ln k all right which is the same as delta g equals to delta h minus t delta s so this is what scientists previously uh, normally do uh, to you know calculate all this enzyme reaction kinetics and whatnot okay so we have five more minutes um so what we will look at um uh, so uh, going into more detail about the 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 simple basic reaction when you have uh, e plus s uh, in equilibrium with e plus p so two conditions uh, can occur so one is the reaction goes in the forward direction um, the other one is uh, reaction goes into the reverse direction or backwards direction and how do you get that so t all right so you have um then then e plus s at equilibrium so the k will be uh, more than one so ln k equilibrium will be positive uh, so delta over here will be negative because again the reaction is minus rt ln k right um so it's the opposite for if you have more substrate enzyme complex or substrate substrate and enzyme um then the enzyme in the product again if you exclude the the words of enzyme so if you have more substrate than the products um the k equilibrium will be negative therefore delta g will be uh positive okay um what else do i want to say here uh, okay so but delta g only tells us about if the reaction will happen okay it doesn't tell you it, it doesn't talk anything it doesn't suggest um, whether the reaction will be fast or slow so that's why we we will go into more a little bit more detail about the enzyme kinetics and and thus the influence the importance of the enzyme substrate complex okay um enzyme kinetic does Woo. so enzyme kinetics uh, is an enzyme catalyzed reaction as you mentioned as as everybody know the plot of reaction vers um, versus velocity um, uh, can be depict as oh wow it, it, the graph doesn't come up okay so that is the graph uh, I actually draw it like this so um, on the uh, y-axis you have the reaction velocity or elevated as just uh, v uh, y v is very and uh, on the x-axis you have the substrate concentration again this is relate this to um, the, the previous slide where whereby it says here if you have more of the substrate then um, you know uh, the delta g will be positive so the reaction will happen okay so you, you just just have that in your mind so what we'll have here is that um, when you have uh, n uh, substrate plus enzyme or enzyme plus substrate uh, forming your enzyme plus products what you will have in terms of reaction velocity is something like that okay so at one point you will have um, my drawing is a bit skewed okay but at one point uh, the reaction velocity um uh, the reaction um, rate will uh, not reaction rate because rate is over time uh, the, the reaction will goes to plateau the product formation will go into into plateau uh, or, or v max will be rich why because as i mentioned earlier the enzyme concentration is always way way less than um, the concentration of a substrate at any given time okay so it's always a bit less um, so you will have a, a reaction kinetics um, you you will reach 
um, a saturation. That's the correct word that I was looking for. You will reach a saturation. So when you have a saturation, you will have a V max. So there is a, a, a maximum rate um, of, of the product formation. So what we're going to look at, so instead of looking at the whole graph in the picture, uh, what we kinetics are interested in is the um, initial velocity. So the initial rate of reaction is, is mostly um, of interest because you know, knowing the, the maximum velocity doesn't tell you anything because towards the end of the day, um, in an industrial application, what you produce uh, sometimes, okay, this is not always, sometimes, what you want is you want, you want a, a constant flow of uh, something. So you want to always have, when you look at this reaction, you want to extract out the product and at the same time, you want to always put in, in more uh, substrate industrial purposes why because this way you can maximize the reaction and and the reaction can can work non-stop okay imagine if you keep on uh, feeding of uh, substrate without putting out the products so at one point your 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 tank or uh, your reaction vessel will uh, be full right so um in in uh I'm not sure whether you guys learned about flow chemistry. So in the principle of flow chemistry is that the reaction is continuous. So it, it's not a static reaction whereby you put in A and B in a one beaker, you stir it after a few hours or after a few minutes, you take it out, you filter it and then you get products. No, that one is, is, is uh, our basic uh, lab level. So for industrial level, the, the most optimum way is to have a reaction vessel. We have your reactants. You always have a feed. Okay. A feed meaning that you always have your substrate uh, being added to your reaction vessel and at the same time you will have um, a way to extract the product cons consistently so that in, in your reaction vessel you only have your enzyme and the enzyme again it's a biocatalyst catalyst it needs to be recycled okay uh, it needs to be reused so if you have a flow chemistry where you have that and that going in and out uh, at the same time this this is where the reaction will go but because you you want to look at the rate formation of the product so v not the initial rate of reaction is the um, critical information okay i think uh, that's it for today um it's already 47 minutes um we're gonna go into this in a little bit more detail um before we going into um a more detail about the um uh, reaction kinetics and and finally these are the references that that I've, um, I've been using okay so you have um, biotechnology for beginner so that's the title of the book uh, biotransformation of organic chemistry um, and um, this is the website where I got all the crystal structure of the protein and uh, additional reading you can view on that so it basically talks about what I'm talking about today and of course the YouTube link which I did not post. Alright, so I think uh, that's it for this lecture. Um, thank you and see you later.